Okay. So you're running this on a, a Linux box? Yeah. The uh, database server is already running as product? Exactly. But it, this, this is totally, I mean, th this code really should be platform independent. You should be able to do this on anything. Um, you know, Windows machine, it should work just fine. Uh, or o OS 10. But yeah, I, I, I use Linux at home for this uh, just because that's what I'm, what I'm used to and what I find I can get stuff done l most quickly on. Um, so that's it. It should work on Linux 10. It sh I mean, Python, you know, I mean, P Python is, in theory, platform independent. So, it, you know, unless you're really getting into the underlying details of the, of the operating system, then it shouldn't be any problem to, you know, take this exact same code, um, you know, put it onto a properly configured, you know, Windows machine, and it would work. Right, it's properly um, You're having some SQL server running on the machine. Yeah. That's yeah, that's right. Um, in theory. <laughs> in theory, it works. <laughs> And so that, so that was step one. So that, so what we've done is we've gone through, um, you know, every single of these pages, and we've grabbed every single row um, of, uh, you know, uh, of this information. We've we've just pulled out the information into in and uh, for each of these, just put it into a database. And each of these is just, you know, a, just a column within my database. So what I have now essentially mirrors this information here, which is great. Um, and then anytime I want to update it, I just run it again, and it looks, you know, and if it finds a new recording that is not in there, it just adds it. Okay, great. So, step two. Um, let's download all the recordings. So, I'm using basically the same, basically the same libraries that I used before. Um, and uh, this is where I want to store, all, you know, the folder on my computer that I want to store all the audio in. And um, so now, here I'm going to start with the database. So I start with the database, and um, I want to get all of my recordings. Okay, so um, let's pull out all, you know, eat every single entry from. Uh, this database, and let's figure out what the the URL. Um, in other words, I'm pulling out every URL from every single row, and I'm putting them into a big list called URLs. Okay. Now I'm just going to loop through those URLs and download the, you know, download every single one of them. Okay. And so I'm going to uh, title each of these files, each of these downloads, as um, you know, uh, the, the the actual uh, uh, URL zero refers to. Um, that index number there. And so each one of these files is going to have a unique uh, name that is equal to uh, that, uh, uh, that number right there. And check if it already exists. If so, uh, continue. And then if not, just grab the file. And so again, here I use um, the same old uh, requests uh, library that comes with Python. Uh, it's built into Python. You know, get this URL, then you know, op open a, a, a new file with name path, you know, which is right here. Um, and this means write uh, binary. Um, and then just you know, uh, just write it as it comes in, and that's all it's doing. And uh, uh, once it's done, it flushes the uh, the buffer, and it gives me a little message about what's going on, and then I'm done. That's it. And so that's how it worked. Uh, and this uh, this was very effective, and it uh, you know um, downloaded all of those recordings in about um, you know about three days. Um, going, you know, call it about 10 or 12 hours at a, at a stretch over overnight each each time. Um, and uh, then, you know, at some future lecture, I'll talk about then what I did with all these recordings, um, because that's that was really the point. You know, that was kind of you know I didn't do this to learn web scraping. I learned, I did it so I could you know do a, do an interesting project with machine learning. But uh, we'll save that one for another lecture. Um, any questions or anything about this? Did you have to log into this website? No. So, so this is a, an example of a website that's, you didn't have to do anything to access it. That's correct. It's all yeah. read only. You know, and it's funny that you should mention that, because as a matter of fact, the next site that I'm going to talk about, uh, you do have to log in to get the information I wanted. Okay. I didn't know exactly who's in the website. <laughs> well, you yeah. know. 
And so, um, yeah, that's true. But, um, but so I started with this example because this is this is a simpler case, and this this is you know kind of almost as simple as it gets. I mean, they, they formatted their data in a very nice, you know, easy to to grab way. Um, you know, the the data format hasn't changed over time, which is nice. This is the same thing. You know, when I did this, probably, gosh, maybe over a year ago now, uh, it was just you know the exact same um, uh, data format that exists right now. And so this is a pretty easy um, easy problem to solve. The other extreme would be something that's running on you know, some kind of attack on the file. So what you're yeah, and, and that's and yeah, and one of the things with uh, with web scraping is you are making a whole lot of assumptions that you know if I look at my um, does it look like that website was written in PHP? No, so there's a couple. It's, it's got a couple of widgets that are in PHP, but generally it's a flat website. You go to a certain URL, you're almost going to get the same thing. Whereas there's a lot of these websites that you know, like popular um, news aggregation sites. Well, you click on a link and the URL doesn't change, so it's yeah. you can't access it via REST as easily. Correct. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, and you'll you'll go to this thing and it'll run some PHP script that, that yeah, exactly. may it may ask for a cookie, it it may use a function of your recent browsing history, it yeah. may um, But it's the same URL and you're getting something it's not deterministic. It's not it's not completely deterministic. Yeah, okay. Or there's something going on. And CGI is particularly annoying for <laughs> so, and one of the things that, that you're very vulnerable to when you do automated, you know, web scraping like this is then they they change their web page, and more often than not, that's going to break your uh, your scraper. So I'm dependent on them, you know, calling. Uh, you know these various data fields, what they're calling them. You know, um, like you know, if they, they if they change this to you know URLs with an S or something, that it, it just broke my system. You know, and so th so you are dependent on them. Well, even if they change the order in this case, uh, order should be actually okay. If they change the order, it would still work. Um, but if they change the names of any of these things, it would break it. And so that's actually what happened um, for my next example. So my next example. Um, this is a, this is a, another kind of fun project. You know, I'm a member of the Seattle Mountaineers uh, since 2010, and um, one of the, uh, the the ways that you know that. The, the way the Mountaineers works is okay. You know, people can you click on find activities, and um, oh wow, okay, there are a bunch of. Come on. You haven't logged in yet. Right? Correct. Okay. I've not logged in. So this is this is you know up for anonymous access right now. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, come on, there we go. Okay. And so as you see, you know, it, it lists out um, all the activities that are coming up in the. Uh, Kind of in the, in the near future, and you can filter them by, you know, type of thing that you want to do. Um, you can do filter them by uh, the name of the leader, um, and uh, you know by all this, you know, all this other stuff. You know, date, um, whatever. But this, this is pretty much what it looked like, and um, there's no email alert. Um, feature on the web page, so uh, you know the only reason, and, and some of these trips end up being a little bit competitive to get, you know, onto, and so the only thing I, you know, you can do is just go back and constantly check this web page to see if new stuffs opened up, which is annoying. And I mean, come on, man, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, we're a bunch of computer geeks, like we don't like, you know, wasting, you know, valuable mental energy doing <laughs> repetitive tasks. That's what, that's why, you know, um, that's why computers exist, and so. Uh, I wanted a system that, first of all, you know, if an interesting trip that I care about was listed, if a new leader listed it, it would email me. Cool. And then secondly, you know, just again, for my own kind of, you know, as a fun project for machine learning, I was kind of curious, I wonder if anybody's ever actually run some analytics about which leaders are most likely to cancel trips, you know, because of weather or something, you know. And it was just kind of, it'd be kind of fun, you know, who's the most, you know, which leaders are the most active, you know, leading, um, you know, or, uh, um, you know, which leaders are the most popular, and or which uh, locations are the most popular. There's absolutely no reason that I would want to know this information other than I think it'd be kind of fun. Um, and 
obviously there's no way that you could get that information from you know the website itself. So you have to analyze the actual data. So, so okay, well why don't I make a um, why don't I make a database of all of the uh, Mountaineer strips that run? And I'll just keep updating that, you know, um, periodically over time. And then, um, you know, I'll have that on my own machine and then I can analyze. Oh, wow, okay, you know, look at, people really like doing trips to Mount Sai, for example. You know, imagine that. Um, and, uh, okay, well, that, that's kind of neat. And so, um, the first version of this web scraper I built and uh, got it working and it, and it was doing its thing. <laughs> and then they completely redid their web page and it totally broke my web scraper. And that's what I was saying. They, I mean, they, 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 Mountaineers maybe about a year and a half ago did a full overhaul of this web page, and it looks completely different now than it used to. And um, th that totally broke my system. And so I, I just got around to rewriting it maybe a couple a couple months ago, and uh, now it's working again. But, um, but that was the problem I was trying to solve. So I want to be able to periodically, you know, go in, figure out what trips are, are going on in the next X amount of time, um, put that into a database, and if it the trips meet one of my criteria, either it's being led by a, a leader that I really like, or it's going to you know a, a particular location that I really want to go to, I get an email so I can go and sign up for it. Um, and so that was that was my challenge. And so you'll note all those rules in your database. Then I mean, you you, mm -hmm. you have a web scraping app mm -hmm. sucks the data down periodically. Mm -hmm. so that now you've got a Postgres database, mm -hmm. all of the data, and then you probably have some rules in your database that then send you email or spit out something. Uh, the the email, the email decision is made at the time that the data is entered into the database. Oh, so yeah, so the first brings it down from the exactly. website. Exactly. You know, find something interesting. Because I want to know. Because I want to know. I want to know as early as possible when those um, trips are listed. So this is what my email looks like. Okay. So trip details. Here's my leader. You know, there's the uh, location. You know, remarks. The date that it's going on. You know, what type of trip it is. Oh, and you know, how many people? How many slots they have open? Um, and, uh, and so that's it, you know, pretty simple, but, you know, also effective. And um, you know, that's kind of all the information I'd want to be able to uh, then, you know, decide if I wanted to sign up for that trip. And I never had to go in and check the web page. It's just, you know, it comes to, it's, it's um, what's it, a push rather than pull. You know, so it, it lets me know when something interesting uh, comes up rather than me having to remember to, which I never would do, uh, log on and check. And it's, as a result of you polling the database every night or something? Not even every night, but yeah, periodically. Yeah. Um, because you know, I, I there might be a, I mean, there might be a smarter way of doing it. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, th this way definitely works, you know. And uh, you know, if you know, I'd be curious to hear if you know. I, I imagine there might be better ways of doing this. I mean, what they really ought to do is put a feature on the page that lets you do what I just described. <laughs> but until that happens, you know. Uh, uh, so anyway, so one thing you'll notice is, um, uh, just picking one kind of at random, I'm not going to be able to, who's leading this? Oh, there, it does tell you there. Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, one thing I noticed is that um, in order to actually get the um, leader names shown up, showing up on this page, there we go, you have to be logged in. Okay, so, all right, um, and I, I just realized, wow, okay, it looks like you can actually, even without being logged in, you can see who the leader is by actually clicking on the link, but um, I don't know if that's new or not, but at the time, I, you know, I figured, oh boy, I'm going to have to log in every time, I'm going to have to automatically log into the page every time I want to scrape this information. So that's what you were, you were talking about. So, okay. Um, Websites don't seem to like that if, uh, if uh, it's done automatically. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like Craigslist, uh, we'll just ask you, are you a rogue? Oh, you bet. Yeah, that's why CAPTCHA. That's why CAPTCHA exists, and that, that goes back to my, um, yeah. you know, comment that you know, hey, you know, look, this is potentially powerful. It's definitely powerful. It's potentially destructive, you know, stuff. And so, uh, and so, do it responsibly, you know. And so, uh, I wouldn't. I don't. My, my automated system doesn't work any more frequently than I would literally go myself and log into the page and, you know, do it manually. Well, Craigslist um, work for a while. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the other end of the spectrum. That's you know, yeah, and that's or, or I'm sure um, like we were talking about, you know, automatically gathering real estate listings and trying to, you know, and in, in go to go to Zillow and they publish all this stuff and in theory you could go and just pull all that information. I'm sure people try and do that and it's you know violates their terms of use and yeah. yeah. Zillow's information is a subset. Yeah, but regardless, though, I mean, you know, go, going and, and, and doing that, um, <laughs> you know, it's problematic, um, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, as long as I'm using the site as I would if I was just, you know, doing it manually, I feel kind of okay okay about it. Uh, or I have, you know, explicit permission of, you know, the, the site owner. But, yeah, you know, it's something that, that you always need to be cognizant of because if you, um, <laughs> if there's a bug in your code, for example, and it actually starts pinging the page every <laughs> You know, ten, you know, ten milliseconds or something, and all of a sudden you've created a Denali service, and uh, so that's that's why you know it's important to um, you know to be uh, um, to be respectful and, and courteous when you're when you're doing this sort of stuff. What side effects about NASA? They, they, they kind of want to encourage that. Yeah, and so yeah, that's. They'd rather you wear their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, there's a robot stuff text. Exactly. And so, <laughs> which is kind of, I mean, it almost, I'm sorry, it just begs the question. I mean, if somebody's going to make a robots.txt, you know, file, then the next thing I'm going to do is just make a, add a, a line of code to ignore the robots. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's really comes down to a matter of, of courtesy, I think, you know, and, and people, um, you know, being, being respectful of, uh, you know, this, uh, all the hard work that people put it, put together, you know, making this information available to us. Um, I wonder if you're hammering the site too hard, the site administrator will figure it out. Yeah, we'll we'll block you. Yeah, but again, we, we want to be, we're, we're white hats, you know, we, we want to be, you know, we, we want to use our, you know, use t our technology and whatnot for the forces of good rather than forces of evil. We'll <laughs> have text files on the classified site. Well, robust robust uh, text specifically I, more than um that that is meant for web web crawling so that's um you know so uh, and this is even a further this is this is automated interaction of a of a website so you're actually you know doing you know effectively going in and clicking on links and logging in and whatnot so this is even a step further than just you know um, crawling the web page um, but uh, so all right so let's go get to it. Um, Let's see Mountaineers. Um, let's do Scraper. Okay, so how do we do this? So this is similar to the previous example, except that it adds a couple other additional complications um, or features. Uh, one feature is the emailer, the automated emailer, um, which is really nifty. And you know, having set, having the, the capability of automatically sending e emails is just so is just you know so neat. It comes up in so many uh, so many times uh, where that would be helpful. Um, so that's one. And then the second is actually having to log into the page to get access to the information I want. Um, and so this gets a little bit more complicated, but really not that much. So this is where we start. Um, so periodically, call it once a week, uh, this program will run. And so what it does, okay, sets up some basic logging, so I, I can I can check. Oh, okay, you know, um, it, you know, the, my scraper ran at such and such a time, and it was successful, or there was some kind of an error. Um, and uh, uh, but then this this is the first thing that it that it does. Okay, so it goes. Yeah, let's see. Oh, come on. Let's see web grabber. There we go. Okay, so this is this is really the first uh, interesting step. Um, so this uses a library called Mechanize. Um, Mechanize is a very popular. Um, um, a very popular tool for, in effect, I would describe it as um, programmatically um, creating a browser. So this is um, allows you to allows your computer to basically act like a web browser. Um, and uh, so the first thing it does is it, it actually creates a browser. 
Um, and you don't see this browser anywhere, but uh, it, it effectively, you know, it, as far as the web page is concerned, you're just going to that web page with your own browser and, you know, looking at looking at its information just like any other human would do. Um, and so it sets up, yeah, the facilities for handling cookies. Um, and it, this stuff is all standard. It's in the documentation. It's 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 actually pretty straightforward. And uh, oh, here you asked to uh, handle robots. Whether whether you want to respect the robots text, you know. And so it's a switch. You can say yes or no. Yeah, well, I, you, you have to for this, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think it would work with. Uh, and uh, so, okay, let's see. Um, ba -bum. That's. Uh, oh, so you say you're a user agent. Um, you, you tell them that you are a, a uh, Mozilla running on. Yeah, and so this is this is. <laughs> Well, this is actually my, my actual web, my actual user agent that I usually use anyway. Uh, but you could set this to yeah whatever you want. I mean, and that's the beauty of it. You're literally um, emulating, I guess is a good word for it, emulating a web browser. Okay, so you set up you set this all up. Um, and for those of you who aren't you know super um, um, uh, technical about uh, how web browsers and whatnot work, uh, these things usually are all happening behind the scenes. You have no idea that they're going on. Uh, the user agent is a little piece of text that your web that your web browser sends to the web page that you're looking at that lets it know a little bit of basic information, namely what version of Chrome are you using, you know, uh, what platform are you using, uh, you know, stuff like that. That's, that's typically very, very kind of basic, and the the, the reason is because um, the web page uh, might, you know, in the, in the olden days of you know Internet Explorer six, right? I think that was the the, the infamous one. Um, it couldn't handle a lot of stuff. That you know Chrome would handle, and so you know me as the web designer had to actually have essentially different web pages, one for people who are still using Internet Explorer six, or, you know, versus Chrome or Firefox or whatever. But um, okay. So was the main reason you needed the mechanized library in this example because you needed to explicitly log in? Yep. And that's it. That was the only reason. Yeah, that's the only reason. The library did not have the ability to. Post that's correct. Form. Yeah. Uh, the other library you can you can do a post. There's the code right there where you need to create a browser object. You got it. You need to do all that. And yeah. It's one reason you needed mechanized. That's right. You have to do the login. Because if I didn't if I didn't care about logging in, this would actually be a lot easier, um, but also a, lo a little bit less interesting. Um, so. When you say br submit, it then comes back with a different URL. That's correct, yeah. You said you had the ability to post in the other library. Yeah. What's the difference between posting and doing what you're doing here? Because this one requires cookies, requires a session cookie. Yeah, because when you log into a, you know, and I, you know, I, I should confess my kind of, you know, ignorance on this topic. I don't know nearly as much about it than I think a lot of other folks. But um, when you log into a, a web page, uh, it puts a session cookie on your, there, there are different ways of authenticating a user. Um, one of those ways is it puts a session cookie on your web page that's just a unique, um, temporary um, token that says, oh, you're a user X, Y, and Z, and um, nobody else would know what that token is uh, because I, I already authenticated that you gave me the correct username and password. And so when you're just doing a one-off um, stateless is the right word, stateless uh, post, then you're not going to be able to have that um, capability. You can sometimes do it by, sometimes you can do authentication by, you know, tokens right in the uh, URL request, uh, you know, um, itself, but, uh, also headers. And, yeah, headers too. Basic authentication. Yeah. None of these methods are perfect. Oh, they're definitely not perfect, but um, the, the nice thing about Mechanize is you can actually treat Mechanize a lot like you would treat your own browser. So if you know how to do it in your own browser, you could probably figure out how to do it in Mechanize. And so that's that's why I went this route. It was just you know fairly straightforward. Um, so do you have to, did you have to build any of the cookie stuff here using? Yeah, it, it does it. It does it for you. So you set up your cookie your cookie jar, and then when you hit. Um, this uh, this page, um, yeah. It, it, as far as I know, it st it stores that session cookie for you, and then it's in subsequent interactions with the page, it'll it'll maintain that. So it's stateful. Yeah. yeah. Does it support JavaScript? I'm not sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, me Mechanize is a lot of fun, and, and it's pretty powerful. So, uh, and it exists in, in multiple languages. If you, I think it's you know exists for uh, well, obviously, definitely like Python, but other other languages as well. Yeah. 
Um, so in this one, yeah, it goes to it goes to the login page. Yeah. And then, um, so let's take a look at the. Let's see. Let's take a look at their login page. Uh, let's just just to make sure we have exactly the correct one. There we go. No, I just meant to use like. So what this is doing is it opens up this page right here. Okay, now I need to figure out, you know, what's what's the field called that I want to put in my username and password. So I go to my old, you know, inspect element again, and then oh, here it is, name, right there, AC name, and then for the password, oh, here it is, right here, AC password. So those that that's what these fields are called. And so um, Mechanize has a um, fairly sophisticated way of automated, automatically filling out forms. And so I know the two fields are called AC name and AC password. Okay, so you have to sniff the page in order to know what they're referring to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but different pages will call them different things. Um, and that's you know, and that's why you know the, the, the two tools you need for web scraping are you know this you know a, a good browser with. Uh, um, you know the, uh, the uh, all these tools down here, so you can actually see what I what elements I need to, to work with, and then you know your your Python environment. Um, so that's it. So uh, and one problem with this is it, it seems to require that you store your uh, your password in plain text, and I haven't found a good way of, around that. You know, it's it's never a good idea to store any password in plain text, and. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm sure there's a better solution out there that I haven't thought of. I'm not sure, yeah. I mean, the, the easiest thing is it's not, it's not a password I, I particularly care about too much, so I don't really feel bad. But the wants it in plain text, so you have to send it in plain text. There's got to be some way of, around that. You know, I just, it just goes against the, kind of all of my instincts to write you know, a password. It just feels wrong. It feels dirty. It definitely feels dirty. Yeah, yeah. you could store yeah. your credentials in Python file and just import it. But then you're still, you're, you'd still be, you'd have to be, you know, you'd have to be encrypted, then you have to be programmatically decrypted, but then you need a password. Yeah. Do you do it if you're decrypting you your programmatically? Yeah, so you, you could. Encrypt the, the capability, right? Encrypt the data in your database. Yeah. And then connect to the database, grab your username and password from, as a select statement from your database. Yeah. Actually, this is why These you have a lot relying on yeah. HTTPS. Yeah, they are totally relying on them. So, yeah. I mean, and, and so that the best, the, the best thing I have, you know, the, the best answer is, you know, uh, okay, you know, try, how how much do I really care about this? Okay, probably not that much. And so. They could use me on the same as your password. All right, thanks. <laughs> there. So, <laughs> so you know. Um, I, I mean, it's a Mountaineer's website. I, I know it's not like it's not like my bank or anything, but yeah. but still. It's, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm sure there's a better solution for this. Yeah, I signed up for. You know, I signed. I signed up myself for like every single trip in the entire. <laughs> like, who is this guy, Aaron? He keeps not showing up. To, <laughs> like, 